How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Welcome again to Light from the Light. This is our channel that enables us to talk about specific promises of God's Word. As we look at the light of God's Word, then God gives us the ability to see how to apply God's Word to the issues of life. And it's very important as we go through the Scriptures to claim promises, because Scripture tells us that we have been given many great and precious promises so that we can use those in order to advance spiritually as we face the challenges of life, whatever they may be. They may be health challenges or financial challenges. They, they may be relationship challenges, but it's God's Word that gives us the answer uh, to how to face these problems. I'm Robbie Dean. I'm the pastor of West Houston Bible Church, and we're here to focus on the light of God's Word. But one thing I want to do first is one of our listeners uh, asked a question about a um, framed chart that I had on the wall uh, back to my left. And I have it here, and perhaps we can pick it up with the other camera, and I can show it to you for just a minute. But this was, um, uh, this was found. I found it in my parents' um, stuff when after my dad died and I cleaned out the house and I have several more like this and um and this was originally drawn it says by Harold Lindsay this was done probably around 1954 1955 Harold Lindsay is more popularly known as Hal Lindsay uh the author of Late Great Planet Earth and so he drew this dispensational chart for uh, Pastor Bob Thiem, who is pastor of Baraka Church. I grew up going to uh, Baraka Church. That's where my parents went to church. And so that is a, a very old and very classic um, drawing of the dispensation. So being a strong dispensationalist and loving history, including uh, history related to uh, even modern times, uh, that's an important chart. Okay, so we are uh, looking today at a great promise in Psalm 46, 1. Psalm 46, 1. So we repeat the promise over and over again to learn it uh, using the address at the beginning of the verse and at the end. Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46, 1. Now, this is the opening verse of Psalm 46, so it tells us right up front who God is, that this is, uh, this, He is our refuge and He is our strength. Now, we don't know what the circumstance was for the writing of Psalm 46. The heading doesn't give us any indication. It just says that this is written for the chief musician. This would be for the uh, praise of God uh, in the tabernacle at the time or later in the temple worship because the sons of Korah were a group of musicians and also choir. Uh, they were very musically talented. And so this was written for use in the corporate worship of Israel in, in the temple. Now, this first verse reminds us of two important things. First of all, that God is our refuge, and second, that He is our strength. You know, our strength fails. It's limited. We, we have very limited strength, and we have limited knowledge. But God is our strength. He knows all of the issues. He knows everything we face. He knows all of our weaknesses. He is our strength because of, his, number one, His omniscience, and number two, His omnipotence. He is, and first of all, he is our refuge. Now, this word refuge is a Hebrew word that simply means that. It means a place of shelter, a place of refuge, a place to uh, take shelter, for example, in a storm or shelter from some kind of danger. And it's often used in relation to seeking refuge and trust in God. And so let's take a look at another usage of this in Psalm 61. In fact, the word is used several times in Psalm 61. We look at Psalm 61, verse 3, and we read, 
the psalm is praying to God. The you is capitalized. It's a reference to God. For you have been a shelter for me, a refuge for me. And then in synonymous parallelism, uh, are, are actually it's the first phrase is a parallel, but the the line is really more of an expansion on the idea of explaining the shelter as a strong tower from the enemy. Let's look at the context because Psalm sixty one uses this word refuge several times throughout. It says, "Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer." Have you ever prayed like that? Call upon God and say, "God, listen to me." Listen to me, pay attention to this prayer. This is very important. And so the psalmist goes on and he says, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. The idea there is when I grow faint, when I grow weary, when, I, when I'm just ready to give up. And then he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Now, what is that rock? The rock is often used as a name for God, a title for God, a nickname for God, and it also is a a picture of of a strong uh, escarpment that we can take shelter in, and no matter what the storms of life are, uh, we are protected. Psalm 27.5 states it this way, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tent. It is taking refuge in the tabernacle, as it were, that, that God uh, takes care of us. Psalm, uh, excuse me, Deuteronomy uh, 32.4 says that he is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. He is a God of truth and without injustice. Now, you and I both know that this whole concept of social justice is something that's become very, very popular today, but it's very much wrong because it locates justice in, in society. It's seeking, seeking equity, but that's not a biblical idea. God is our source of justice because he's the one who is, um, is, is absolutely perfect and has perfect righteousness. And this verse tells us that he's a God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. So when we look at this, this verse in Psalm 61, 2, where it talks about the prayer to lead me to the rock that is higher than I, the rock that is higher is, is, is the Lord. Psalm 61, 3 goes on to say, for you have been a shelter that is a tent a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. This idea of trusting in the shelter of your wings is often used, that phrase, your wings, to refer to God's presence. Uh, He is surrounded by the um, uh, seraphim who have uh, wings, and so they pray uh, to the God who is uh, hidden and protected and surrounded by by this angelic host. And so it says, I will trust in the shelter of your wings. It's basically saying, I'm trusting in you, O Lord, and in your presence. Psalm 36, 7 reminds us how precious is your loving kindness, your faithful, loyal love, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Psalm 91.4 puts it this way, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. That's what we're talking about, taking refuge in God. He is our refuge, and he is our strength. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Where do we get his truth? We get his truth from the, from the word of God. It is God's word that is absolute truth. Jesus prayed to the Father, sanctify them by means of truth. Your word is truth. And it is that truth of God's word that protects us like a shield and like a a buckler, which is a a larger, stronger shield. Now let's look at Psalm 62, verse 7. Psalm 62, 7 says, In God is my salvation and my glory. 
The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Again, we connect these ideas of a rock and a refuge. And then Psalm 62, 8 says, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. He is our refuge in times of of deep trouble. Now, recently, I've been reading a lot of different books about missionaries, and um, I've been really focusing on um, the missionaries uh, in China. I've read several biographies and uh, several other uh, things about uh, the China Inland Mission, and uh, these people just had tremendous faith in God. And uh, in the late 40s, the Chinese communists were trying to take over China. And they were fighting the nationalist forces who were led by Chiang Kai-shek. And there was a missionary couple, uh, Dick and Margaret Hillis, that had four children. And they had set up their ministry in a place near the Mule River in the Honan province of China. And uh, as the Chinese army was approaching, uh, they were in church. And it was a time for them to pray and a time for them to fellowship with uh, over a thousand Chinese believers every Sunday. And one day they were approached by the commander of the Nationalist Army in the area, and he came to warn them. And he told them that the communists were marching on, on Mule River and that they were going to overtake it. And they warned him that he better leave and leave immediately. But it turned out it was too late. And sometimes we wonder, what is God doing when something happens and it seems like it's too late, but it's an opportunity for us to trust God. And it was too late because the uh, communist army had already uh, destroyed the railroad bridges that left the area. There was no way for them to escape. And suddenly they heard in the evening uh, shots fired and uh, the town that they were in, the village that they were in were under attack. And, and the battle was raging all around them. And all night they they all, they heard the battle. They couldn't sleep and they could only spend time in prayer. It wasn't long before the city fell and the communist troops came in. And now it, it was a communist city and it was a new problem. And the problem was that the Nationalist Army outside of the city walls was beginning to attack and they were firing artillery shells into the village to kill the communists and destroy the communists. And as uh, the evening progressed one night, uh, the battle became very, very intense, and the house next door to the Hillises uh, just exploded. All of the inhabitants were killed, and uh, it looked like the Hillis home would be hit next. And so the family uh, gathered together. They, they're they sheltering one another in their arms in a corner, and they just they just spent the time in prayer. Uh, artillery shells were exploding. Glass in the windows was breaking and and sending dirt and glass into the house. Uh, they were they were scared. They were deafened by the noise. And the family prepared uh, to be with the Lord at just any minute. And suddenly it stopped. It stopped. There was a silence that was thick. They got came out from their corner. The house was filled with debris. There was damage to the windows, but no one was hurt. So Dick took his, each child, took them to their bed. And he had a young daughter, Margaret Ann. When he put her in her bed, he saw that there was this scrap of paper that she had put under her pillow. And on that paper, she wrote this verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. So believer, let's remember that, that when we face difficulties, it, it, we don't know how much, how difficult it may be, but God is our refuge. God is omnipotent and God is omnipresent. And so he is there. Uh, let's recite this verse together. Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Psalm 46.1.
We need to trust God like little Margaret Ann did. So we look forward to seeing you again when we take up the next verse as we continue to memorize the promises that God has given us. Next week, we will see you.